Bloodline story just took probably one of the most interesting turns ever. So we'll get into everything that's going on there. We'll also check out bigger teases with Uncle Howdy and more. Starting things off with the latest teasers for Uncle Howdy. The strange events on WWE television continued on the April 12th edition of SmackDown in a major way. During the commercial break, WWE once again did the White Rabbit teaser for the live crowd in the arena, where they turned the lights off, the screen glitched, and then the song played before everything went back to normal seconds later. That was a teaser just for the live fans in the arena, but there also was an on-screen teaser for the fans at home. During Bianca Belair and Jade Cargill's tag team match near the end of SmackDown, the screen glitched for half a second. And if you pause it at the right frame, the glitch screen contained a message that read, You forgot about us. It's something that fans caught and got extremely excited about because it takes us back to those White Rabbit days. And even further back to the WWE hacker days where glitches on the screen with hidden messages were also happening on a regular basis. So it's a type of mysterious storyline that gets everyone hyped up for. Uncle Howdy still remains as the number one suspect to be behind all these mysterious events. But the big twist here, especially with the latest teaser, is that Howdy is now using the word us. A clear hint that Howdy isn't coming back alone and will have someone with him that apparently we all forgot about. So who could Howdy be referring to and who could be with him? Well, if Howdy is going to have people with him, Alexa Bliss has to be one of the first guesses. Alexa was already halfway brainwashed by Uncle Howdy before the storyline was put on pause back in early 2023. Howdy was coming after Alexa, basically trying to recruit her from November 2022 all the way till January 2023. So there was a lot of time invested into the story there of Alexa transitioning back into her evil persona and back into the Bray Wyatt universe. So if it's revealed that Alexa Bliss is in fact already back with Uncle Howdy in current day, then it does make a lot of sense for Alexa to be his potential plus one. Alexa said on several occasions that her time with Bray Wyatt were the most fun she ever had in her WWE career, even more fun than the time she was winning all of her WWE world titles. So considering how much that time with Bray Wyatt in WWE meant to her and how close she holds those moments to her heart, it definitely seems like Alexa would be open to keeping this vision and universe alive and thriving in WWE. So if Howdy isn't coming alone, you have to assume that Alexa Bliss just has to be involved with Howdy's big plan somehow. So Alexa should be a lock for a Howdy-related faction, but who else? Well, like we mentioned during the first Uncle Howdy teaser breakdown, Braun Strowman is also a very good candidate to be involved with Uncle Howdy. Strowman had the Wyatt family history. He was mentored by Bray, both off-screen and on-screen early in his WWE career. They were working together as teammates in the Wyatt family and had a nice lengthy feud against each other in 2020. So when it comes to potential allies for Howdy to be teamed up with, Strowman makes a lot of sense. Some fans are also throwing Eric Rowan's name around as a candidate, and that's a very good suggestion. Eric Rowan is the last remaining original Wyatt family member, so if you're doing a faction related to the Bray Wyatt universe, Eric Rowan should be towards the top of the list for picks because he's been there since day one. So that teaser appears to be hinting and confirming that Howdy at least has got two or three people with him. And everyone is assuming that it's going to be individuals that were close to Bray Wyatt. That's why people like Alexa, Strowman, and Rowan all seem very likely for the group. And of course, we don't know the clear story yet, but taking a shot in the dark, it definitely seems like they could take the story in the direction of Bray Wyatt's close friends and followers, basically continuing his mission for him. Bray Wyatt's character was always known as this cult-like leader that always knew how to brainwash people and get behind them with his words and mission. So Bray Wyatt may no longer be here, but his followers are still here, and they know his mission, and they know what he would have liked to do. So the followers can still carry on that mission. So that could be a potential direction for Howdy and his apparent faction. Maybe telling everyone that 
Bray may no longer be here, but you forgot about us. The followers were still here. So that could mean a main overall goal for Uncle Howdy's group. Don't let Bray's word and vision die out and keep it going strong in his memory. These teasers are in full effect, so we can expect to see more and more of them going forward on both Raw and SmackDown. Triple H teased that Roman's next storyline would probably be his greatest story to date, and it looks like we're already starting to see what Triple H was referring to. The Bloodline was seen on the April 12th edition of SmackDown heading to their usual luxury locker room, but to their surprise, the Bloodline's logo was ripped off the door and replaced with Cody Rhodes' logo. Solo Sokoa was furious and wanted to fix things right away, but it was Paul Heyman who tried calming Solo down, saying that wins and losses matter in WWE, and losing has consequences. So they have to accept that Cody won and had the champion locker room now. But then we get to the Bloodline's in-ring promo and things took a turn for the worst. Paul Heyman says that Roman Reigns ordered that the Bloodline accept countability for WrestleMania 40. They weren't blaming the loss on anyone else, and that it was Roman's fault for taking his eye off the ball for a moment. But Solo has heard enough. Solo stops Heyman from talking, and reminds him about the line that Heyman told him earlier in the night, that losses have consequences. Solo walks over to Jimmy Uso, embraces him, tells him how much he loves Jimmy and how he's a brother, but then Jimmy gets attacked by a hooded man revealed to be a Bloodline family member, Tama Tonga. Solo and Tama unleash a brutal attack on Jimmy Uso, and Paul Heyman's reactions tells us the whole story. This attack on Jimmy and the inclusion of Tama was not something ordered by Roman Reigns. Solo invites Heyman to stand and pose with them over Jimmy Uso's body laid out on the floor, but Heyman goes to call Roman Reigns and Solo rips Heyman's phone out of his hands and stomps on it. It's now clear that Solo has gone rogue. Later on in the night, Paul Heyman gets interviewed after visiting Jimmy Uso, and Heyman says that Jimmy isn't doing good. And then Tama comes up and orders Heyman to get out of the way, and says the orders come from the tribal chief, with Solo Sokoa walking up behind Tama. So they've been calling Solo the tribal chief heir for a long time, and it looks like his reign as tribal chief is officially here. Solo Sokoa says that losses should have consequences and be met with changes. So he kicked Jimmy Uso out because he lost at WrestleMania 40, and Jimmy continues to goof around. So Solo told him that he loved him, but he took him out because he was a loser at WrestleMania and a weak link overall. And Roman Reigns also lost at WrestleMania. So Solo Sokoa has now replaced Roman as the tribal chief since Roman lost the WWE title, his biggest claim of being the tribal chief. So Solo saw all this as a big opening for him to take over the tribal chief position and take control of the family. And Solo's first move was to bring in Tama Tonga, a massive and serious addition. Fans are extremely excited for this direction because this is legitimately creating a real bloodline civil war. We saw a mini version of the Bloodline Civil War last year after the Usos broke off, but the potential here for this current storyline already blows the 2023 Bloodline Civil War out of the water. Because now you legitimately have two sides, with two tribal chiefs for the family. Solo Sokoa thinks he's the tribal chief now, and he has a few stronger family members on his side, such as Tama Tonga and The Rock. And that will be the heel side of this civil war. And for the babyface side of the Bloodline Civil War, we have the original Bloodline members, Roman Reigns and the Usos. With Jimmy getting kicked out of the Bloodline, that opens up the door for a reunion with Jay. And considering how Solo wrongfully took that tribal chief position, Roman will also be going against him as well. Creating a perfect Bloodline Civil War, three on three. And what would be the grand finale of this Bloodline Civil War? It could end with a heel rock versus a babyface Roman Reigns at WrestleMania 41 with the family control on the line. So keep an eye on the Bloodline story because this is a very interesting direction. But what are your thoughts on today's stories? Leave your comments below. Don't forget to subscribe with all notifications on and leave a like if you enjoyed. Thanks for watching guys. Thank you.